So to this point, all of our work has really been set up. And now we're at that stage where we're ready to uh, gather some information. We already know where it's coming from and use it to make some decisions. So that's what we're going to do over the course of this unit. So let's start by seeing what this process looks like for policy analysis. So we did a lot of work to track down sources of data that we would be using to assess our policy options uh, against our criteria. Um, now, what we're just going to do is, is report the findings. We're going to look and see where those policy options fall according to each criteria. Remember, we have to predict the future, right? We have to project our outcomes and, you know, we have to do this in an informed way. And so we could look at the results reported uh, from other places that have used these policies before, uh, or we can try to make a logical argument based on the text of the policy and the context uh, in which we're trying to apply it. So to go back to our bus carbon emissions reduction uh, example, um, remember, we are, are trying to uh, reduce fuel usage as a proxy for reducing carbon emissions across the bus fleet. Um, and remember, I, I defined and identified effectiveness in this way. I operationalized it um, as the extent to which uh, a policy will reduce the fleet's fuel consumption in gallons per day as tracked by our, our fuel service. And remember, I set out my positive, neutral, and negative conditions in this version of effectiveness. Remember, there are multiple versions uh, this way, right? This is the simplest. Um, a positive outcome just means there is indeed a reduction in fuel consumption, neutral meaning no change, and negative meaning an actual increase in fuel consumption. Uh, remember version two, um, I set some targets, right? I set 20% as the positive condition. Uh, 10 to 19 percent as the neutral condition, and then anything less than 10 percent would be unacceptable and falls into the negative condition. Um, and I've identified a few policies, and I, I made these policies up, um, but policy A could be to eliminate idling. Uh, buses sit for a long time while running, right, and they're burning fuel at that time. So uh, policy A would be to require drivers to shut off the bus um, if they're stopped for more than one minute. Um, Policy B could be uh, an eco driving standard. This requires, you know, smoothness. Basically, um, uh, if you drive gently, um, you're not uh, accelerating hard, accelerating quickly. You're using less fuel. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to include the null of no policy change, where there is no there's no change in current practices. Uh, and I'm going to report the data. So I found some data that suggests that um, idle reduction practices. Um, can reduce uh, fuel usage by 5 to 10% across a fleet. Um, and I have a citation of a study that determined this. Um, policy B, uh, this was a little bit harder, so I have to extrapolate some information. Uh, I found another study that suggests that slowing down overall, in addition to driving in, a, in an eco-friendly way by using smooth inputs, um, reduces fuel consumption by 12 to 18%. Um, but that same study found that if you um, eliminate smoothness, eliminate the eco-friendly driving, um, the, the reduction from just speed is only 2 to 3%. So I had to extrapolate that impact. The impact of smoothness in this case uh, results in a 9 to 15% reduction in fuel usage. Um, and then, of course, if there is no change in policy, the conditions will not change. The outcomes will be exactly the same as we're experiencing today. So remember, going back to the operationalized uh, criterion here, uh, remember positive is simply a, a decrease in daily fuel consumption, uh, neutral would be no change, and negative would be an increase in fuel consumption. And by that definition, um, right, both my policy options result in a positive condition, right? They meet that positive threshold because they both reduce fuel consumption. Whereas no policy change, right, results in a neutral condition because there will there there will be no change in in fuel consumption. Therefore, right, both policy A and B meet the positive condition um, if I define effectiveness in this way. Policy B does perform better than policy A in terms of effectiveness, however, but my analysis isn't set up to account for that. Uh, if I use the other version with targets. Um, remembering that a positive outcome or a positive condition is a 20% reduction, a uh, neutral condition is a 10 to 19% reduction, and a negative condition is anything less than 10%. If I go with that definition and those thresholds, 
um, I find very different results. Uh, so policy A to re eliminate idling uh, is a five to 10% reduction. That's actually falls within that negative condition. Uh, policy B, right, falls within that neutral range. Um, and then by this definition, uh, not changing anything falls in the negative range. Therefore, policy A and the null both meet the ne negative condition. Policy B falls within the neutral condition. And while none of our policy options actually meet the effectiveness target, B is the most effective of those three if I define effectiveness in this way. Um, but there are reasons why we use multiple criteria, right? If I just had to base it on effectiveness, I would have to, right, choose policy B. However, um, there are other considerations. Uh, policy A, eliminating idling, right, returning off the bus if it's parked for a minute, uh, is free, right? It doesn't cost anything to do that. You literally just turn, turn the bus off. Um, it's really easy for drivers to implement, so there doesn't need to be any kind of training. Um, and if I'm considering administrative feasibility, one of the components of that I might consider would be compliance, right? Will drivers actually implement this? Um, and this kind of policy, we can expect pretty high compliance because it's really easy to do and it doesn't really cost them any extra effort or energy to do. Uh, whereas policy B, right, would require additional training. It's, it's not an easy practice. Um, it's a stressful way to drive and accelerates driver fatigue. Um, it's also going to slow down your buses, right, and could introduce lateness along your route. And because it's, it's difficult and it's tiring and fatiguing, we might expect moderately low compliance from drivers, right? They might start off driving in a gentle way, um, but as the day wears on, become more and more aggressive and just drive like they would normally drive. Um, and, you know, you've got slow moving buses, uh, everyone else on the road is going to be mad. So I can see that uh, policy A um, is positive in terms of effectiveness, cost, because it's basically free, um, and administrative feasibility, right? Scores positively on all three of those criteria. Uh, policy B um, is, is effective. Um, it's going to be cost neutral because it is going to uh, require some investment. In terms of compliance, you know, we can expect it's not going to perform super well. Uh, if we look at no policy change, if we don't change anything, then we're going to experience the same outcomes in terms of effectiveness. Uh, cost, it's free. It doesn't cost anything not to make changes. And it's really easy to expect compliance with no policy change. In the next lesson, what we're going to do is make sense of this and use that information to make recommendations.